Computer science has designed this shoe and the new clouds. We should find out how it works. Hey everyone and welcome back on the channel. My name is Alex and in today's video we have something completely different. Not a new brand, um, not a new model, but something absolutely revolutionary. This is a new version of the On Clouds. This is called CloudTech Phase and as you can see it looks absolutely different from anything you've seen on previous On models. Those clouds have been engineered in a very special way and I think this is a good segue because we went to Zurich um, and we spoke with some on people. Let's maybe first understand how they engineered those, um, those clouds, how it was made. It was human designed and computer assisted uh, with a very powerful software, FEA software. Yeah, let's go uh, speak with Ben in Zurich. You just showed us this uh, wonderful model that allowed uh, on to create the cloud server, the new version. Uh, can you explain how you um, developed this and how it works, uh, what you took into account to uh, produce this model? Sure. Um, yeah, initially at least we need to know uh, the, the inputs to the model. So we need to know how people are running, uh, the positions of their like, leg and foot in space and the speed that they're running at. In, in simulation, it, what we can do is, is, is take that information and try and then use the mathematics behind it to predict what would happen in real life. Okay. So Ben explained how this shoe was designed thanks to the FEA software. Quite impressive stuff and when we saw the, all the, the models they used, it, you know, it really seems like futuristic almost for a shoe company. But this is the, the trend, this is where the, the industry is going and it's absolutely um, amazing to, to witness it and to be uh, runners in a, in a very exciting changing times. Let's go into the specs. Um, this review will be going back from Brussels to Zurich and, and so on. Let's do the specs now. Weight of this shoe, 261 grams, around nine ounces in my size US 11 EU 45. This is a very lightweight daily trainer. 261 is really competitive compared to many other shoes. This is in the ballpark of, you know, the PEG 39 for instance or those type of um, low stack trainers. But the difference between other shoes, lightweight daily trainers like this one and the, the new Cloud Surfer is um, stack height and the way it is designed. I'm gonna put the, the numbers for the stack height right here um, on, the, on the screen and the drop as well. But you definitely feel some foam on the foot and that's probably something that differentiates a lightweight trainer like the Cloud Surfer from other um, lightweight easy, uh, you know, endurance daily daily trainers. Width of the platform, we don't have anything too specific, no inherent stability coming from that, and definitely something that on may be improving in the future to um, improve the stability of the shoe that has a few stability features. We'll, we'll come back to that in the stability section, but width of the platform could be um, a bit wider. Transitioning from the width of the platform to the fit and the upper, uh, we're gonna do the fit first, and then we're gonna go speak with Marika in Zurich about the upper. Um, the fit is on the, uh, you know, voluminous side, you have some room. It's not a snug fit, it's not a uh, constricted fit. You have some room to play with. Not necessarily a lot of width in the, in the fit, but definitely some volume. Despite that, the lockdown is good. On has worked with some, some very nice little um, uh, eyelets here on the, on, the, um, on the eyelet chain, traditional eyelets, and also those, um, I would almost call them flywire, but flywire, flywire isn't a, an on technology, but it, it reminiscent of that, of, that, um, of that Nike flywire type of eyelet. And the lockdown is pretty good, but again, you have some, you have some volume and that's uh, quite pleasant for a daily trainer. Lockdown in the heel is good. It is a stout-ish um, heel with a, you know, not too much padding, but just what you want. The, the tongue is too padded to, for my liking, and this makes the, the shoe a bit too hot. I really have hot feet in this, in this shoe, and that's maybe a bit because of the, of the tongue, but that's, that's for the upper. And the upper has some sustainable nice features, especially the, the way it is colored. 95% reduction in water consumption, that's what this shoe saved thanks to a very simple process. The yarn of this shoe has been colored before making the shoe, instead of making the shoe and then coloring it, and that's how this shoe saved thousands of liters of water compared to all other running shoes. Let's go speak with Marika in, in Zurich. She will explain. So Marika, you're the product designer for the Cloud Surfer, and I have a tricky question for you. How would you describe a shoe in three words? Oh, all right. So, I mean, the Cloud Surfer is soft. It's really butter soft, um, and it gives you a very nice ride. So basically this smooth transition from heel to forefoot. And what else? 
it's very sustainable. Actually, it's our most sustainable um, shoe. So soft, smooth, sustainable. Yes. Three S's. Yes. For a surfer, four S's actually. There you go. Good there job, you go. good job. <laughs> um, and maybe you mentioned for the sustainable aspect, uh, the water reduction for the dyeing process. Uh, very yes. interesting. And this is something that, you know, comes to the overall picture of reducing the impact uh, when producing shoes. Um, is there anything else sustainable about the, the surfer in the production process? Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, the water reduction, as you mentioned, but also we are using less pieces. So as you can imagine, that makes the, the whole production um, more efficient. And also, you know, you know, use less energy and so on. So it's really like a Swiss engineering, smart engineering to do actually more with less. So we have a fifth S with Swiss. There you go. Awesome. Thank you, Maggie. <laughs> Thank you. All right. You know how sustainable the upper is, how much water is saved with this uh, dyeing process. Very interesting, I never heard about it before meeting uh, Mariku and the, and the on uh, sustainability teams in, in Zurich. Quite interesting and something that, um, you know, probably is also the future of sustainable shoes. Not everything is in the recycling uh, aspect of them. Some of it is also in saving um, some water and uh, some raw materials um, in the first place. Now let's look at what seems to be, you know, the, um, the essence of the shoe and what makes it so special. We heard about the computer-assisted design of the, of the clouds, of the new Cloudtech phase midsole. Let's explain how it, how it works, how it rides, and uh, how Oni is moving away from something that made they, their history while still keeping their DNA. So really a smart move, I think, and probably a shoe that will be even more popular than the Cloud Monster. Huge success last year. And this will probably um, be even, I don't want to say better, but probably more popular and suited for more runners thanks to this midsole. We're looking at a uh, EVA plus olefin block compound midsole with those clouds, Cloudtech face technology with the clouds uh, being shaped and optimized for the perfect ride. It's a shoe that will work mostly for heel strikers, midfoot strikers as well. Four foot strikers will not experience that, you know, domino effect, cloud collapsing effect but they will still get a very nice cushion in the forefoot. But I think if you want to benefit from this shoe, really, you know, go ahead and, and heel strike. That will probably be the, the best way. Even, you know, forefoot midfoot runners have sometimes some heel strike in their gait cycle, uh, mostly at slower paces. So that may be a, a way to use this shoe for those midfoot forefoot um, strikers. In terms of ride, we're looking at something very, very soft, butter soft. You definitely feel the compression of the foam not too much bounce, not too much energy return, just a nice compression, nice, you know, cushion is, is obvious, but very, very soft landings, very soft transitions from heel to forefoot. Uh, the rocker is quite impressive for an on-shoe, again, something that I have never experienced on an on-shoe, um, and something that makes this ride, you know, very, very, um, very, very special, and the transition even more uh, pleasant. I think the design of the clouds plays a huge role. Before, on the traditional Cloudtech clouds, you would experience some compression, mostly vertically, but not necessarily too much force trans translating horizontally. Whereas here, you definitely have some vertical compression, but because of the orientation of the clouds, you can feel the, I wouldn't say the propulsion, because it's definitely not energetic, but something that takes you forward and that is way more natural. Um, that's how I would put it, way more natural. Let's go speak with Niels. Niels is the head of innovation at Onrunning, probably one of the, the hottest position to have at Onrunning at the moment and in, in general in, in shoe companies, if you're interested in, in shoes. Uh, Niels will explain a bit how this shoe uh, works for heel strikers, midfoot strikers, forefoot strikers, and maybe whether he sees this technology on other shoes in the future. Niels, you mentioned this shoe was developed for like the largest possible group mm -hmm. of people so that everyone can enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And you also said that many people are heel strikers. Mm -hmm. And we know that's absolutely fine. Can you confirm this will work for everyone then? Yeah. So as we uh, uh, took like over 1,000 measurement units from different kind of runners to build a simulation model, right? We are pretty sure that uh, we are capturing a large amount of the popularity in, in terms of runners with this shoe. So it works great cushioning and rise for heel strikers, nevertheless um, four foot runners um, as well, because cavities work in the heel as well as they work in the forefoot. Uh, and moreover, uh, when uh, four foot runners have an easy, an easy, easy training session, most of them only predict are they are four foot runners, and they are, they are basically more mid foot, more heel okay. strikers. 
So we don't see at all a problem. The second thing is we tested a lot with forward runners as well. And the feedback was, hey, it still feels cushioned, reactive, and, and works as well. So here we definitely took also the feedback of the runners itself. Yeah. We make sure that we are meeting this target. CloudTech Phase is just uh, is, is a new technology franchise. It still has the signature of our CloudTech, so cavities or holes, which cushions, we call it structural cushioning. Uh, we see so much potential in this technology, also for other areas of application, that uh, the development behind the scenes is running. So, um, yeah, stay tuned and potentially CloudTech Phase you will so see soon on different kind of other shoes for different kind of uh, runners. Applications. Thank you so much, Niels. Yeah. Thank you for your It's time. a pleasure. Now let's discuss stability because I think this may be one of the concerns in this shoe. The only stability feature that it has is this uh, guide rail on the, on the outsole. Uh, you know, in the in the midsole, but see, seen from the outsole, it helps you have something a bit more aligned and something that goes a bit more forward um, with that nice eight cycle alignment. However, that's the only one, and I'm not sure it plays a huge role. I have experienced myself quite some medial collapsing in this shoe, and also on the um, on the toe of face, quite some external um, movement and external, you know, um, yeah, collapsing. I would say almost. This is not a stable shoe. You know, it, you have to um, put it in the category of those soft, very pleasant recovery day, easy day, endurance day for some people type of shoe, but without any stability features. And this therefore is probably not a shoe suited for uh, runners with moderate to high levels of pronations. Le runners with, you know, mild pronations up to moderate pronation can use it 100% and pronation again is good and it's good to uh, help your body adapt to that to that movement to that collapsing and teach him how to pronate properly But if you have too much pronation this probably is not the right shoe for you because of the lack of, of Stability features as such looking at the outsole nothing too specific here The coverage is mostly on the heel and in the forefoot which you know isn't bad I think the the durability will be good provided that the midsole compression remains equal or at least doesn't downgrade too much in time, but if that is um, if that is fine, the durability should be okay with the um, with the outsole. I would see this shoe going around you know 600 kilometers, probably a bit more if you're a bit lighter. Price point 170 euros, 169.95 euros, very competitive price point. You're getting something that is close to the Rebel, and you could think, oh, the, the New Balance Rebel V2 V3 are a bit cheaper than that. It is correct, but I think here you are experiencing something a bit more special than the the Rebel. And it is worth having this shoe in, the, in your radar if you're looking for a soft, again, butter soft, special type of transition and special type of technology uh, shoe. So if you have that, that in mind, uh, this may be the, the shoe for you. And I think, you know, it compares against some other bigger boys like the Invincible, the Nimbus, which are more expensive. This is in a lower price ballpark, which is rare enough to be to be highlighted for on running quite a you know expensive brand or at least on the on the higher end of prices, um, I would recommend you to try it at least because it is special and I think it will work for many, many people because it has been designed based on many, many inputs, many, many uh, testing with many, many different people. And that, that's what makes this shoe so suited for many runners. Many people tested this shoe and have been, you know, their data have been used as input to provide uh, the best possible computer development, computer software analysis, uh, of how those clouds should look. Yeah, I think this is it. Uh, if you have any questions, and I think you will have some comparisons against the Monster, the Flyer, the Runner, whatever on shoe you wanna, you wanna compare it to, down in the comments, I will try to do my best to answer your questions. Enjoy your run today, enjoy your ride, and go beyond your limits. I'll see you in the next one.